Okay, so welcome back to the channel and in today's video I am talking about fashion magazines um, I recommend and the reason I'm making this video is because I have talked a lot about Vogue magazine and uh, people, it has led people to ask me, um, okay, you're always bashing Vogue magazine, so what magazines do you actually uh, suggest that people read? Uh, so that's basically uh, what I'm going through in this video. So the first magazine I want to talk about is System Magazine. Uh, now System Magazine, as far as I know, was started in 2013. And what you can find in System Magazine is more long format conversations. Uh, so a big example, this is their latest issue. Oh, uh, this is their latest issue. And it features an interview with uh, Rick Owens and Yoji Yamamoto. Um, so just very long format conversations where you learn um, about the designer in their own words, um, which is something I really like about System, especially because System gets really big designers. Like the issue before this, um, they had a really long interview with Marc Jacobs and he got to learn a lot about Marc Jacobs um, in his own words. Um, so in that respect, System is really good. Um, when Nicolas Gasquier first left um, Balenciaga, I remember System had an issue where uh, they went in depth and they interviewed him and he was talking about his whole career um, at Balenciaga and what he thought about his time um, when he was at Balenciaga. Um, so amazing insight, especially from System. System is more like long format interviews and conversations. Um, so if you like that, then definitely check out System. And in terms of how often they release, they release twice a year. And yeah, considering this is the latest one, and this is issue 14, um, that means this is the 14th issue. So actually, if you've never read System before, I think 14 issues isn't too hard to catch up with, especially with how good the information is in System magazine. Next, one of my favorite magazines and a magazine I read a lot is ID Magazine. Um, I'm sure most of you know about ID Magazine. Um, ID Magazine has been going on for a long time. Uh, started, I think, in 1980 by Terry Jones. And they recently had a new global editor-in-chief that um, I made a video about at some point um, when I did that video that was Places to Shop in London. Um, his name is Alistair McKim. Um, so yeah, really interesting magazine. It isn't like, I'd say System is really, really fashion specific. ID is fashion specific, but it's also focused on creators in general. So in ID, what you can expect to learn about is photographers, so creators, photographers, artists, um, as well as fashion designers and other people in the creative space. Um, so that's also really good, really good insight because me as a, someone that's into fashion and wants to learn about fashion, it's good to learn about other things in fashion and um, that kind of, you know, broadens your horizon. I'm going off topic now, but a good example is the Royal Academy of Arts in Antwerp. Uh, this is a little fashion history lesson, but at the Royal Academy of Arts in Antwerp, um, they didn't, they started as an art school, so they didn't have a fashion course. Um, now, because they wanted a fashion course, uh, they got one of their lecturers who was an artist to go to Paris and go to Milan and learn how to basically structure a fashion design course. And then she came back to the Royal Academy of Arts in Antwerp and then founded this art course. Now, because she's an artist in terms of the way she thinks, in terms of her background, uh, the way she taught fashion was so unique and different to the way most people teach fashion. And that's why we had very experimental designers and there was a new different type of design that was coming up from Belgium at the time. Hence the Antwerp 6, Andrew Misto, Jules Van Noten, um, obviously people like Raf Simmons, because Raf Simmons learned um, under Linda Lopper and Linda Lopper's family. So yeah. That is basically just me telling you how it's really good to have different perspectives other than this really fashion specific um, perspective. Um, what I really love about ID though, the most is actually that ID is really about up and coming people. So sometimes you might see established people, but for the most part, you see, especially when it comes to fashion, you see a lot of um, people that are kind of on the rise, but you don't really know too much information about, you've just heard their name and then you read ID and you like read a really in-depth interview um, about some of these designers. So it's really good because it's also good to know what is going on in the industry in terms of who's kind of on the rise. 
Um, so yeah, ID, amazing publication, amazing magazine. Definitely check it out. I know ID um, is released a lot more frequently than something like System. If I can remember correctly, ID releases every two or three months, but don't quote me on that. Um, but something also I really like about ID is their stylist and one of the um, like editors at large, Ibrahim Kamara, he's an amazing stylist. Um, and the styling in ID Magazine is also one of the best. Next, I'm going to be talking about probably the most academic and cerebral um, fashion magazine out now that is available. Um, and this is called Vestodge, founded in 2009. And Vestodge, like I said, it, it's more about kind of like fashion theory, it's really academic, really brainy, even someone like me who I like to read a lot. Um, it's really difficult for me to understand a lot of concepts in Vestodge and I have to kind of reread it over and over again. Um, so a lot of people ask me about like fashion philosophy, theory, stuff like that. Um, if you want to get into stuff like that, then definitely read Vestodge. Vestodge is like the, the brainy publication of fashion. Um, yeah, just extremely academic. That's what you can expect from Vestodge. It's really hard to get your hands on um, an issue of Vestodge though. I don't even have one. Um, I've just read it at libraries. Um, so good luck finding an issue. But um, yeah, if you can, definitely read it. It's really amazing. But I think what I really love about Vestodge, first of all, it releases um, on an annual basis. Uh, secondly is Vestodge is the only fashion like magazine that I know, kind of magazine slash publication-ish, that I know that has no ads in it, uh, which just tells you that it's mainly for educational purposes, and it's not to make loads of money and stuff like that. That's not really the goal of Vestodge. Next, we are talking about Luncheon Magazine. Um, this is actually something I found out about recently from someone who follows the channel uh, because um, someone told me about an article in this magazine where they went in depth on Martine Rose's influences and Martine Rose's inspirations, uh, which I thought was quite interesting. So I was like, yeah, I'll check it out. And after reading this issue, it's made me want to read a lot more issues. So I'm just finding the page now. So this is the, Martine Rose page. Not sure if you can actually see it, um, but yeah, this goes in depth on Martine Rose's inspirations and stuff like that. Um, but luncheon, luncheon is, as you can see from the front cover, very fashion specific. We've got uh, Moa Lola, Lulu Kennedy's daughter, literally very, very fashion specific, but it's also about art and food. Hence why it's called luncheon. I actually like the language they use. Um, they use kind of like these interesting words that kind of relate to food in the way they structure sentences, which I find is quite quirky and cool. Um, but yeah, luncheon is amazing, really in depth in terms of fashion and art and art and fashion, once again, they're kind of intertwined. Um, so I feel like if you're into fashion, it's also good to read on things like photography, color theory, um, art, stuff like that. So. Um, I really like it and also just the food, the food aspect of it, I also like, like um, that has nothing to do with fashion or anything, but it's also just interesting because the type of food that is talked about in luncheon, a lot of it is food made in an artistic way. Um, and that can also be used in terms of visual merchandising and aspects of that back into fashion. Um, as this is, I only found about this magazine recently. Um, I don't actually know how um, often this actually releases in a year, um, but I'm sure with a quick click of Google, you guys could find out if you're really interested. Next, I'm talking about 032C, uh, founded in 2001. Now this, um, another amazing fashion publication, absolutely amazing. Um, I think 032C is kind of similar to System, um, in the fact that they kind of have a similar way they interview people and it's more long form interviews um, and articles and they go in depth on anything they go on. Um, if they're going to, if there's anything in that magazine, they're going to go deeper into it as opposed to just have a lot of 
tiny, tiny surface level argue, um, article, sorry. Um, what They have very famous issues, like they had an issue uh, where they um, went really, really in depth um, on the first 10 years of Raf Simmons' career. Um, that's a major issue. And in this publication, there's a lot of research that goes into designers. Um, they've also had um, kind of like deep research on designers like Ray Kyle Kubo, Azadina Laya, um, who else? Nicholas Gasquier, I think. But yeah, absolutely amazing magazine. Definitely a magazine you guys should get as well. Um, they release twice a year, so biannually as well same thing as system um so yeah it's man 032c is another really really good um, magazine publication to pick up next we are talking about days now days uh used to be called days and confused uh, so those are the same thing um days i'm kind of on two minds about it because days is about fashion art music lifestyle However, the fashion in days to me isn't in depth enough for me. Um, it's very surface level. And I think what is more in depth for days is more like the music, the film, the entertainment stuff, um, which it doesn't really interest me as much as the fashion stuff. So I would prefer if it was more like ID, um, more long form um, kind of like interviews and articles um, as opposed to just kind of like touching base um but what i do like about days if you're a photographer if you're a stylist if you're a visual merchandiser this magazine and the magazine i'm mentioning next are also id actually because styling and id is amazing those these are the magazines you want to kind of be reading to see how they style things because it's really interesting and they have really good stylists um i think i prefer more the digital stuff that days does like dazed online Days Digital, their Instagram page. Um, on their, on Days Digital goes really in depth on fashion sometimes. Um, more than the magazine, I would say. Definitely more than the magazine. But yeah, if that is your area of interest, if you're interested more in like music, um, art, like film, um, movies, stuff like that, then definitely read Days more. Um, but yeah, definitely still a good magazine. Um, but in terms of compared to, if we're talking about fashion, uh, compared to things like Vestodge, System, 032C, ID, it's not really up there in terms of fashion. Next, we have W Magazine. Now, W Magazine basically is just like your celebrity, gossipy type of publication. Not really going to give you that much value in terms of fashion. Where it will give you value is, I think, photography in W Magazine is the best out of all the magazines I'm gonna mention in this video. Um, so once again, if you're a photographer, stylist, kind of, you wanna see, uh, be inspired by different shoots, get different inspirations or ideas, then W Magazine is definitely the magazine for you. But to me, it's just too celebrity gossip. Like, it's just, I, that stuff doesn't really interest me. I don't really care about what celebrities are wearing, to be honest, because I don't wear what celeb like I don't wear things because that celebrity wears it. It's not really how I view fashion. Um, really, I just want to learn about designers, their inspiration, more fashion history, what designers are up and coming, um, what artists are doing, what are the big artists, stuff like that. That's what I'm kind of more interested in. Now, the last uh, publication I'm going to talk about, of course, of course, um, actually, I'll talk about both. GQ and Vogue. Now, GQ is definitely a lot better than Vogue, magazine-wise. Um, so let's start with GQ. GQ is a menswear magazine. Um, they used to have these articles that was like, how to dress like a man, how to, and I just don't agree with a lot of their very, what's the word I'm looking for? very close-minded opinions of the people that write in GQ because they're like how to dress like a real man it's just a man wearing a suit it's like anyone that knows about fashion on a deeper level knows that there are different ways of dressing and just to be a real man you don't have to wear a suit and just GQ articles in general they're just a bit almost like a meme at this point um, and then apart from if they're not doing that in GQ, it's like how to shave, how to, it's just, 
If you're trying to learn about fashion, like it's really pointless learning how to shave and or how to tie a tie. Like you can check that on YouTube. Like seriously. Um, so in that respect, GQ doesn't to me doesn't really offer that much value uh, as a publication. Um, now going to Vogue, of course, um, head of Vogue Anna Winter, um, head of British Vogue is Edward Enningful. Now I have many, many, many issues with Vogue. Um, so Vogue. Vogue for me is one of those things where Vogue is known for the magazine and what when people think Vogue the first thing they think about is Vogue magazine but of everything in the whole Vogue empire I think the magazine's the worst part of it I love what they do online I love um, just everything that Vogue does digitally um, but just the magazine is just terrible. Like, let me show you guys something. So, Vogue, I bought these three books recently, Alexander McQueen, it's called Vogue on Alexander McQueen. So as you can see, it goes kind of in depth in the career of Alexander McQueen. Um, another one I've got is Vogue on Jean-Paul Gaultier. So once again, goes quite in depth on the career of Jean-Paul Gaultier, like quite in depth on the career of Jean-Paul Gaultier. Another one I've got is Vogue on Christian Dior. Once again, it goes quite in depth on the career of Christian Dior. So as you guys can see, Vogue make amazing stuff when they make stuff like books and the journalism is amazing or they make different stuff or they make stuff online or what they make on their YouTube channel is quite entertaining. But for some reason, what is supposed to be their bread and butter and what Vogue is known for is almost like they pay the least attention to Vogue. So in Vogue, they're always spelling mistakes, they're always typos, there's no attention to detail. The journalism is so surface level, like talking about trends and just ne there's nothing deep, deep about Vogue or there's nothing educational about Vogue. You're not really going to learn anything apart from, okay, this is what the trends are and this is what most designers put in their collection, which I, I don't know why people care about stuff like that, to be honest. Um, and they make some insane mistakes. I'm just like, how are professional journalists with like journalism degrees making mistakes like this? So there are some recent cases in Vogue where Vogue will literally interview a person. And what then happens is they, they interview this person so imagine your publication, you've interviewed a specific person. Obviously that person has a name. Now, when you publish the magazine, you've put a different name of someone you didn't even interview in the first place that looks like the person you interviewed. Like that sort of mistake is like what I expect from like someone who's writing a publication who's like in primary school, not from an industry standard journalist. And I feel like Vogue, Apart from just the fact of the journalism is horrific, another issue I have with Vogue is the adverts. Vogue has gone from literally being somewhere where you could read a little bit in the magazines to now half of the entire magazine is just ads. And it's just so money driven. It's so, Vogue is just driven on deadlines, which is why probably the journalists make all those mistakes because there's no attention to detail. Vogue is just like, push the story out now, push this out now. And Vogue to me has become one of those publications where it has a monopoly. Um, so it'll always be respected in fashion, regardless of how many mistakes they make and regardless of how bad the journalism becomes and regardless of how much of the magazine is actually readable because all of it is literally adverts. Um, and in that regard, yeah, Vogue is honestly a waste of money. Like if you buy Vogue magazine, um, just give me the money because it's clear that you want to just throw money into the dustbin. That being said, I love everything else Vogue does. It's just the magazine I have an issue with. Like I said, books like these, absolutely amazing. Books like these, amazing. When they make stuff like this, the journalism level is high quality. So journalists like Charlotte Sinclair, Carolyn Assome, Chloe Fox, amazing journalists. But journalists that write in Vogue magazine, <laughs> those terrible articles where they can't even get someone's name right, just shameful. Um, and those type of mistakes, 
never happen at publications like Vestodge, 032C, um, ID system, because their attention to detail, they have a certain standard of journalism that they want to keep to. And it's quite upsetting that um, a publication like Vogue that's known for being the pinnacle of fashion and journalism and the best magazine or ever is actually the worst. Um, so yeah, that's literally uh, all the fashion magazines um, I recommend or don't recommend. Um, if I left out some fashion publications, because to be fair, there, there's bound to be more and I'm sure I probably missed out some. Um, so definitely leave that in the comments down below. Um, tell me if you agree, tell me if you disagree, especially with the points on GQ and Vogue, because I'm sure a lot of people won't agree, but to be fair, you don't need to agree with me. I like to have discussions about stuff like this um, in the comments section and see kind of people's different opinions. Um, so yeah, on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll be back with another video soon. Um, <laughs> I was just editing the video and I just remembered um, something I left out. Um, so when I, f I was like, I first got into fashion and I was reading Vogue because I used to read mainly Vogue and GQ because when I first got into fashion, I didn't know any better. Um, I was reading about the Antwerp 6 in Vogue and they said that uh, Martin Magella is part of the Antwerp 6 and they left out, I think they left out Marina Yi. So they literally named the 6 and it had Margiela, but it didn't have Marina Yi. Um, so that just lets you know the level of like journalism that you find at Vogue. Like it's, it's embarrassing. It is embarrassing, honestly.